This is Murtal with part two of my apologetic. For most adults, play is not a word we commonly use to describe our activity. Sure, we play sports or play board games, and yes, we play video games, though there's still an inherent assumption that video games are something mature people eventually grow out of. We don't usually say we're going to play with our friends. We hang out, visit, or among Christian circles, we fellowship. Adults don't play games. They work, right? Well, I doubt most middle-class Americans would try to argue that everything they do in their day is for serious. We have to relax, to unwind, doing things that aren't usually productive. We partake in entertainment. So is there a difference between entertainment and playing? Well, not really. To see why, let's look at the concept of play in its most basic sense. Why do animals play? What purpose does a cub serve to gain by gnawing on its brother's ear, aside from adorable photo ops? Biologists say playtime is a way to train skills in a safe environment. Those two cubs pouncing on each other are preparing themselves for real hunting. Humans aren't animals, and we do look at the world in more complex ways. But I think we can all see the parallel when it comes to play as a simulation of real-world skills. That's why make-believe is so common. That's also why most children's toys are ways to facilitate make-believe. Whether playing house or cowboys and Indians, little kids are acting out basic skills for adulthood. Now, learning to control a giant robot that turns into a truck may not be the most easily applied skill, but it still appeals to a natural inclination to fight to defend what is yours. Even as children grow older, the concept of play as a simulation of reality doesn't go away. Preteens may not play make-believe as much, but there's a reason almost every toy has some kind of real-world analog. This is also when kids start getting into fiction, whether from books, TV, comics, etc. What is fiction but assisted make-believe? You don't need toys or a bunch of room, you can generate the make-believe in your head with a story outline already given to you. That love of fiction doesn't go away. Adults may not read fiction as much, but they still watch TV. Movies are more popular among adults than children. Simulated reality is a part of our relaxation, experiencing the excitement of adventure and drama in a safe environment. We get to participate in the positive of the fictional characters' lives, but if things get too heavy, we can always bow out. I'd argue that most entertainment and leisure comes down to some form of simulated reality. Even the most basic of games usually boils down to a battle between opposing sides. Even in checkers, we talk about capturing an opponent's piece. What are most sports but a legislated arena fight? Football resembles a battlefield more than anything else. Now what does all this have to do with role-playing? If role-playing is a form of make-believe, isn't make-believe something adults move past? Most adults experience simulated reality by having a story told to them, even fiction books require too much mental input for many adults. Mature people just have stories told to them in TV and movies, right? I mean, in the stories we're used to, most adults who are depicted actually writing stories tend to end up going crazy, and they're not usually considered well-adjusted members of society. Is there a place for collaborative fiction in the life of a responsible adult? I'd argue that there is. We're born with the desire to simulate reality through collaborative fiction. It's a part of our nature, a way we train for the real world without the stakes that it involves. So if it is so basic, why do people assume that it's just for little kids? We'll cover that idea next time.